In the early 1900s, biologists had no idea what allowed life to be able to transmit information from one generation to the next. And people were fixated on proteins because they knew so much about protein structure and how many amino acids there were. And it seemed intuitive that it had to be a protein that was involved because proteins were so nuanced and complicated. And it wasn't until Griffiths came along that people began to question this notion that proteins were what transmitted life's genetic material. And what Griffiths did was he took a two strains of pneumonia. Pneumonia is a prokaryote, and one strain, called the S strain, encodes a smooth capsule made of a polysaccharide. And this polysaccharide capsule, otherwise also called a coat, uh, will make the pneumonia strain be able to bypass the host's immune system. It will allow the pneumonia to survive in the environment because that polysaccharide coat is very elusive to a white blood cell or a leukocyte. And the consequence of having S cells in a host, such as a mouse, will be death. And so what Griffith found and what people already knew is that if you injected uh, S cells of pneumonia into a mouse, the mouse would die. And what people also already knew was that there was another strain of pneumonia called the R strain that didn't encode that polysaccharide coat. Consequently, the leukocytes would be able to destroy any R cells of pneumonia that existed and the mouse would live. The next thing that Griffiths did was he heat killed, he boiled the solution containing the S cells, and he found that the mouse would live. And the reason they lived was because it denatured a bunch of the proteins that were necessary for the S cells to survive and reproduce within the host. But the plasma that encoded for that polysaccharide coat was still in solution. And so what happened next was Griffiths took a solution that didn't kill the mouse with the R cells, and he took another solution that didn't kill the mouse cells, which was the heat killed S strain. And when he mixed the two, what he found was it would cause the mouse to die. And this baffled scientists for almost 20 years until Avery came along with a follow-up experiment. And so the question to ask ourselves is what was happening behind the scenes? And so let's look at an S cell for an instant, for a moment. So if we look at an S cell, a smooth strain cell from the pneumonia, what we would find is if we looked at the bacteria, it would have a cell wall, it would have its own circular genome. And in addition to that, it would have a plasmid. So this is the genome, this is the plasmid, and this plasmid encodes for that polysaccharide coat. And that polysaccharide coat is what gave the S cell an ability to evade the host's immune system and not get killed by the white blood cells. And now if we were to look at an R cell of the pneumonia, we would find another cell wall, another host genome, and the absence of the plasmid that coded for that polysaccharide coat that gave it the resistance to the white blood cells. Consequently, the R cells were non-lethal. And so what happened after Griffiths boiled the solution containing S cells is that it denatured the cell wall. And what was left in solution was a bunch of these free plasmids coating around that coated for that polysaccharide coat. And the R cells somehow uptook that plasmid that coated for the polysaccharide coat. And consequently, they were able to make the genes, the, they were able to make the proteins that created the polysaccharides that will allow them to survive and thrive within the host and cause uh, septic shock within the mouse, which ultimately killed it. And so that plasmid was transformed. The R cells were transformed by the plasmids from the S cell that encoded the polysaccharide coat. And so that's going to wrap things up for this video. I hope you guys find it useful and thanks for watching.